Hey everyone. I just watched a video here on YouTube titled Louis Farrakhan Reveals Deception. And it basically, and I'll, I'll show you guys clips um, of this video throughout what I have to say, in between what I have to say. But the bottom line is this man has been preaching the same rhetoric over the last, that I've known, over the last 15 years. And he never changes what he has to say to black people in terms of his message, which is the white man is evil. He is deceptive. Now he's saying that the white woman is also evil and deceptive and that they cannot be trusted. We've been given that information. What else is new, Mr. Farrakhan? This is my question to him and to his followers. Why isn't he preaching things like black business ownership? Like how to defend ourselves? Louis Farrakhan has gotten a lot of money over the years uh, preaching this type of hate speech. Um, and I don't see any schools being opened for the black community. Uh, no private schools being funded by the Nation of Islam that I have seen. If I'm wrong, please let me know. I don't see any black businesses being funded or even heard of black businesses being funded by the Nation of Islam or Louis Farrakhan himself. If I, if I am misinformed, please let me know. I don't see any shooting ranges being opened or sponsored by the Nation of Islam or Louis Farrakhan. If I'm wrong, please let me know. I don't see any hospitals being funded by Louis Farrakhan or the Nation of Islam. All these things we need in the black communities across this nation. I don't see any private uh, police departments or private crime scene uh, forensic uh, type of, of companies, organizations, businesses, whatever you want to title them, being funded, created by Louis Farrakhan and or the Nation of Islam. All I hear is hate whitey, hate whitey. Okay, let's all hate whitey. But then after that, what are we going to do? Because hate doesn't do anything to help us as a community of people who really need to unite under something way more important than just hating whitey. Because I have news for you. Whitey isn't the only enemy. We have enemies within our own community, not to mention the Hispanic community and the Asian community. People all around, even Africans, some Africans hate us. I am told that the African word for uh, us black Americans is akata, meaning cotton picker. Now, some people, if you look up that word akata, are saying that that word does not mean cotton picker and it is not a derogatory term, but that's how I've heard it. So what I'm saying to you is Mr. Louis Farrakhan and the followers of Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam is that yes, we have enemies all from all ethnicities, <laughs> from so many different countries, our enemies lie. But what are we going to do to encourage each other to move forward? And sitting and talking about hating whitey is not the solution to our much more in-depth problems. Because you see, when you're focused on whitey, then you're not focusing on what you need to be focusing on. You're not focusing on education. You're not focusing on parenting, proper parenting. You're not focusing on business development. You're not focusing on community interaction and unity. You're being distracted. 
by something that is not important. I'm not saying be blind to the realities of what's going on in this world. I'm saying acknowledge them and then focus on the more important things. Because I'll tell you something, when you own real estate, when you operate your own businesses, when your children are properly educated, when your children are properly raised, when you can take care of each other and you don't have to ask anybody for anything, not even a piece of bread, then you've got them beat. You can show your power that way. That's how you get the upper hand. I would like to share a story with you guys. And this is just a story to give you perspective on how our community needs to be uh, in terms of unity and support of each other. Now, I love reading books and particularly true crime books. And there was a book that I came across, oh, a few years ago called Killer with a Badge. And it's a book about a New Orleans police officer by the name of Antoinette Frank. Some of you may have heard of her, especially you guys in New Orleans. And uh, it's basically a story about a cop that just goes bad and she kills the people that she is uh, paid to protect. But what caught me as interesting was in this book, it talks about the Vietnamese family uh, that she was working for on her, when she was not, uh, you know, patrolling the city as a police officer, she would work privately for this particular restaurant. And I'm just going to read you guys a little excerpt from the book so that you understand what it means uh, to be tight-knit, hard-working, and supportive of each other as a community. It says, according to Danos, the elder Vus were a part of a community financial organization that operated like an informal bank. Vietnamese families pooled their money by paying into the club a certain amount of money every month. The pool of cash allowed members to take out short-term loans to buy a house or to start a business. Mrs. Vu was the club treasurer and held most of the cash. According to Chow Vu, her parents had just borrowed $10,000 from the club to make improvements to the restaurant, uh, plumbing, and parking lot. So this was a community of Vietnamese people who supported each other in whatever they wanted to do, whether it was buying a house, starting a business, uh, whatever it was, buying supplies for their existing businesses. These people pooled their monies together and they worked together. They were committed to uh, contributing to a fund that was set up solely to help each other survive in America. If foreigners can do it, why can't we do it? We were born in this country. Why are we not supporting each other in the same manner? That's my point. The white man's world has come to an end. You already know something is wrong with his education. You already know that something is wrong with his religion. You already know that something is wrong with his world. But you just don't know how to get out of it. See? So the white man said, well, yeah, that Elijah Muhammad, he's teaching them who I am. And all these black folk know my real name now. It's not Frenchman, Italian, Englishman. It's devil. And now all these blacks are calling me devil. And they know I'm the devil. And now they don't want to have nothing to do with me anymore. I fix up my women and girls. I make them sharp. And I send my little white girls on them. Now that they know I'm the devil, they tell the girl, get on me. 
I want my black woman. And the white girl run away feeling bad, brother. Look here. Samson and Delilah. That's the white man's last trick, brother, is the white woman. That's his last trick. If you can turn her down, you on your way to paradise. Oh, sister, I ain't got on you yet. But that white man is after you, too. Open the door for you. Treat you kind. You like that. I wish this black man would treat me like that. He's so rough and ugly talking and sounding. That white man smooth like silk. You start by looking at these sick rock stars. Whitey playing the blues now. Hard guitar. Elvis the King Presley. Y'all just getting sicker and sicker by the moment. you through religion you're in the church wrapped up in a Jesus that you have not become acquainted with yet poor ragged hungry can't pay your bills he got you he ain't got me I got my doctorate degree he really got you <laughs> Nobody won't get me, man. I'm a football player. Football player. Big plantation. You come out here, I'm a scout. Me, scout. <laughs> he come and look at you with your big muscular self. A smile when you come to my college. Oh, the way you went through them on that line. You were magnificent. Look, I, I, I'm from Michigan State. Uh, would, you, would you like to come and play ball? Scholarship. Ma, Ma, I got a scholarship. Big slave. Gets you on the college campus. You a good football player. He locks you away, gives you a little apartment, a little money. Don't you get involved with the radical niggas. And he give you a white woman. Can you run? Can you play basketball? Come and make some money for the school. We don't care whether you graduate. We don't care whether you pass your test. As long as you make some money for us after you play four years, it's through with you. Now you out. You didn't make the NBA. You didn't make the NFL. Now you out there with drugs because he lifted your hopes and told you you was going to make it, but you didn't make it. And now you ain't got no sense and your big body is broken down. Nobody wants you when you're down and out. Your black woman don't want you. Your mama don't want you. Why they don't want you? Entitled to feel the way that we feel about certain people. But what I'm saying is there is a bigger picture. There is a bigger goal. And there is nobody walking on this earth that is more important to me than my own community. So why would I give that person that is less important to me that much energy, that much focus, when really 
what I need to be doing is focusing on the homeless problem that we have in our community. When really what I need to be focusing on is the lack of educated children in our community, the high pregnancy rates in our community. What we all need to be focusing on is how to reach out our hands and help each other instead of putting out our hands and saying, what can you do for me? I hope that you guys don't miss the message because of the message. Don't listen to one part of this video or one portion, one small segment of this video with a narrow mind. Listen to this video with an open mind and understand the words that are being spoken.